welcome. <laughs> and I'm afraid I have to continue in English unless you want me to just say potum, potum, potum for 20 minutes. <laughs> Very little Tamil, I'm sorry. Um, my initial uh, reaction to speaking was asked if I would uh, speak at the TEDx was that the timing was a little complicated. Uh, it's going to be here for the three weeks and at this point. And I really didn't want to discuss my academic interests. I wanted to speak more from my genuine experience. And I was concerned that my work at Odom would not have been far enough to, along to really discuss with you. But I have found that uh, in my efforts to prepare to come here for international work in another culture, this is my first time outside of America, is I, I found several tips that I have already found very helpful for me. And I thought I would share them with you, not just as a way to do intercultural exchange, but even communicating within your own fields. Uh, I focus more at, at this time on development, and we'll kind of lead the conversation that way a bit. But please uh, take this to heart with all of it. I also prepared several TED Talks because I wasn't sure what I would do. You know, I prepared one, one when I've arrived here, and then one when I arrived and realized there was no podium, <laughs> and I couldn't look at my giant reams of notes. So I have reduced my notes. <laughs> I think you can handle this. I think we can make it through. What I really wanted to cover were these five guidelines I feel have been most important not just since I've made it to India, but definitely more important, uh, I, I realize, since I've been here. And, and even within my academic work and my previous life. The first is be humble. You may be an expert in what you do, but so are the people you work with and for. And I think often we forget that. Uh, we, especially those who are educated or who have a vast wealth of skill sets, can go into a place and maybe be the most educated, the most knowledgeable person there. That does not mean you know everything. And sometimes you can get kind of a big head because they do tell you, ah, uh, you know, your expertise in this is so wonderful, so therefore you must know that. Well, you don't, but you go along with it because you're in the village and there really isn't any other option anyway. You have to remember that the people, the local people, know their own lives, their own history, their own place far better than you ever can. And if we forget that, particularly it happens, I believe, in international development where we have some fabulous model that worked very well in this village or this state or this nation and we carry it somewhere else very inappropriately. We must listen to the people there. Remember to be humble. You do know a lot. So does everyone else. Listen carefully and, and take that to heart. Also have, the second point is to have realistic goals. I think that often we come in with very grand visions and an agenda of 10 or 15 or 20 wonderful things to accomplish. And they are all very valid, very worthwhile. But we may have limited time, always have limited resources. You have to be realistic. And that isn't just when you walk in the door saying, oh, I can only have three choices of what to do. It means that as you progress in your work, that you continually reassess where you are, where you're made it to, are you going to finish those goals? Can you realistically achieve everything? And if not, it's very important to ask the questions of which goals are the most important? Which items that I have put on my list really have long-lasting effects and need to happen, and which could survive without? And I think in development, the most important one, and perhaps in business and every other field as well, is if I can only do one goal, which one helps empower the local human capacity so they can continue my goals? All right, that is really an important aspect of development and I think of all of our work. We, we cannot accomplish everything. 
and it's unrealistic. And it's far better to do one thing well than five things half finished. Um, I, I put one of the important things for me on my list was no generalizations. And I mean by that, avoid your prejudice. Uh, you know, when you go into a different cultural environment, you have a preconception of exactly what is there, what the people will be like, what the strengths, weaknesses, all kinds of cultural issues. There is no one typical Indian. There is no one typical American. And to think that any place has that would be an error. And it's very important for us to say, look at the people that you're with right now, deal with them, be open, be honest, you'll get the same response back. Listen with your heart, not just your head. Pay attention to the details. It's very hard in intercultural communication to always um, read people the way you're used to. You have different body language. Certainly the language barrier can be an issue. If you're really trying to hear their heart, you will. And keep that in mind. Uh, work with the actual person in front of you not the person you expected to find where you're at. Be committed. I think that is the biggest one for me, is that if you bring your heart to something, it will happen. The universe opens doors you didn't even realize existed. And it's an important aspect is, is just being present to the opportunity, being there fully, it, appreciating every part of it and recognizing the value of being there for you as well as for the people you believe you're there to serve. Because in reality, when you go on a journey of development or you go into another culture, the person that benefits most is yourself, no matter what your exterior motives might be. And my last point would be to be grateful. I think that uh, this cannot be overemphasized. I think when you appreciate the opportunity and the blessings that you have and that you have been given and you work to share those with others, you receive far more back than you can ever give. And uh, coming to this particular place, you may not find it the same when you visit America, unfortunately, but my trip here to India I have met nothing but incredibly gracious hosts, and everyone has been very helpful, very kind, and very considerate. I know that's not always going to be the experience I have internationally. I know that's not the experience we all have in our business or other dealings as well, but appreciate what you are given. If you can be grateful for the gifts you have, you can pass them on far better. I wanted to share my favorite development story, and unfortunately, um, I left the, the article at home, so I cannot reference the actual folks who, who wrote this. But it was an interesting development project that they took to South Central America, and they wanted to improve the lives of the local community by bringing in solar ovens. And they established a community network to find a way to disseminate these into the households. So they brought in leaders, community members, women, all kinds of people to discuss the advantages of, of the solar ovens, how to work together to get them out into the population, how to use them, how to train people. Created this, this vast network, did the work, and it failed. People in the households really didn't want solar ovens. It didn't work with their particular needs in their house. So rather than seeing this as a failure, the community group that they had established said, huh, maybe, maybe it doesn't work in the households, but why don't we make a big solar oven and make a community bakery? We've never had such a thing. We'll, we'll establish a business for the first time ever. So they did. This community network built themselves up to, to run a business and it failed. It did not succeed either. And the powerful message, though, of the, the, the article written by the researchers was they did not see this development project as a failure. They considered it a success because though solar ovens did not make it in this 
region, they built a community support system that functioned, functioned well, gave to the community, and brought good things. And that was the real goal. They had come to improve the community. They had achieved that. So look at your real goals. Are your real goals worrying about solar ovens? Or are your real goals actually to make a difference in a place, and you did? I hope that we can all make those differences. I hope that we can all see when we succeed as well as they did, because that is an important part for us as well, to maintain humility, but know that we are making that difference. Uh, I want to thank uh, the folks at Odom who are sponsoring uh, my work while I'm here and keeping, uh, keeping me here in, in Salem. Uh, I'm working south of Madurai in a small village, and the volunteers there have been very supportive in helping me prepare for the talk. I'd like to thank uh, all of the folks who have coordinated this event because they worked very long hours and vast distances to do so. And I think TEDx is such a wonderful program. TED itself is always inspiring. I hope that you have found that here. I want to thank all the speakers who have provided a great deal of inspiration. And most of all, I would really like to thank you in the audience for allowing us this opportunity to speak. Thank you.